Coming up on This Student TV, we're going to learn all about safety. Whether it's texting while driving, safety in schools, or biking etiquette, we have you covered. All this and more on this episode of Student TV. I'm Danny Finnenberg. Today is Thursday. When I was in high school, we usually did Montana Coal and Iron Every second of the day. What'd you call Fred today? Hello, and welcome to this episode of Student TV. I'm Sam Spinner, and first up, we have a video on the dangers of distracted driving. Student producer Thomas Vang told us about his video. It's about how, like, Texting while driving is dangerous for you and um, other small tasks or activities that you're doing while driving isn't safe for you or others. Nearly 25% of all car accidents are caused from texting while driving. It is as dangerous as drinking and driving. Hmm. Eleven teenagers die. Ah! Find more information at distraction.gov. Parking lots can be difficult to navigate. These twisted mazes are full of unseen obstacles, and it's important to remain aware of them. The students at Cordoba High School have some solutions for navigating a parking lot in the following video. My name is Alan. And I'm Kit. And that's Christian. And in this video, we'll be explaining parking etiquette and how to properly park. Parking lot etiquette 101. First things first, you gotta get in the car. Even though it's a parking lot, safety comes first. Put on your seatbelt. And also remember to check your mirrors. After you're buckled up and the mirrors are nicely adjusted, you can now start the car. When backing out, you want to make sure there are no other vehicles or pedestrians behind you. After checking your rearview mirror, you can now look over your shoulder to make sure no cars or pedestrians are in the way. Make sure to check right and left. When finding a parking spot, find a spot that's convenient to where you're trying to get to, and also find a roomy spot so you have lots of room. Here is an example of bad parking. When parking, be considerate of others. Make sure you and the other car has enough room to open their doors and get out and in. Be sure you're in the line of your appropriate parking spot. Here is an example of what can happen if you are parked wrong. It would be hard to get out of your own car, but also route to the car next to you. So don't let this happen to you. Don't be this guy. And remember, pedestrians have the right of way. Here is an example of what not to do. Oh my god, this guy, he's not gonna, nope, nope. Hey, get, move, I'm trying to drive, man. Get out of the road. Here is the right way to handle that situation. And that's it for this video. I'm Kiet. I'm, I'm Alan. Hopefully you learned something! Here is an example of what not to do. Everyone knows how important it is to not drink and drive, and yet 31% of traffic-related deaths in 2010 were due to driving under the influence. If you get caught, you will go to court. The students at Center High School learned about DUI court and have a video to teach us about it. We are here setting up for a DUI court case right here at Center High School gym. This is an actual case with a real defendant, lawyer, and judge. A DUI court case is when a person is accused of driving under the influence of alcohol. How did this program get started? 
You know, the, uh, uh, this was started from a grant with the Office of Traffic Safety. Actually, a judge in San Joaquin Valley about uh, 2003 started this program for his area. And three years ago, the Sacramento uh, County developed it and for our program for our area. What impact do you think this has on the students? Well, you know, it, you never know. As, as Ms. Kellogg indicated, there's some kids that will just say, hey, this is an interesting, funny thing to see. Other kids uh, uh, maybe will think about this. And then some people you can tell are impacted by this. The whole idea with bringing this program to Sacramento County is we wanted it to be real. We didn't want it to be staged or mocked or have um, actors, if you will, come on board. We are um, hoping that that impact of that real aspect is um, empowering them and making an a impact. And I think what you need to think about is that there's a consequence for everything that you do. Our hope that as a result of this program, at least you think about the things that we've talked about here. What key things do you want high school students to think about during this? That it can happen to them. Um, obviously, the, the things that we have talked about here are the worst case scenario if someone does get hurt or killed. And every single person that's come in has said, I didn't think it was going to happen to me. I didn't think I was that intoxicated. Just to let them know that it is such a serious thing. Um, driving to the influence has an impact uh, beyond what you read in the paper that it has a real life impact. What happened here is what takes place every day a thousand times a year. And so this is, this is a real court situation here. What we hope is that you come out of this with two things. One, when you get in a car with somebody who's driving or if you're going to be driving, that you at least think that there's something that could happen, that this isn't something that you're going to get lucky at and get home, that for some people they don't make it home. If we can just stop you know, one person from getting arrested or charged, I think that's a great thing. More importantly, if we save somebody from getting killed or in seriously injured, uh, this program is worth it. Thank you for being here at Center oh, High School. My pleasure. Okay. Reporting for CTV, I'm Irene Katkanova. At Toby Johnson Middle School, changes are being made to ensure the safety of its students. Student producer Ashley Ching is here to tell us more about the story. It's about, well basically since there's the high school and the middle school close together, there's lots of traffic in the morning and our school has been making recent changes in like how that affects it and the outcomes of it and stuff. Throughout the years, Toby Johnson and Franklin High School have been dealing with congested traffic in the morning and after school. With 4,500 students arriving at the same time, we had to do something. Kids often don't pay attention to their surroundings. They're focused on what's going on right for them in that moment. Uh, we had a student that was struck by a car, so we really got together with the community, the school board, and ourselves to come up with ways uh, to reduce the traffic in the morning so kids will feel safe walking to school. Toby Johnson has made some effective changes since the beginning of the 2013 school year. One of the biggest changes lately is the staggered start time. Toby Johnson starting uh, 15 minutes later than the high school has spread out the traffic so we're not all arriving at one time. You'll see that there's new lines out there painted. Uh, we wanted to do that to make sure that students are safe when they're back there and they're crossing, that parents can see them, they know which lanes that they're going in so that they do not hit a student or they don't hit one of the staff members as well. Even that 15 minute difference has made a huge change in traffic. Um, there's not as many cars on the road when we bring our son to Toby um, and leaving school is um, a lot easier as well. The traffic is much, much lighter. Overall, Toby Johnson has greatly improved their traffic safety. I'm Ashley reporting for TJTV, now back to you. Bike riders also have to take steps in order to stay safe. And the students of Andrew Carnegie Middle School have some advice on the matter. Doing illegal drugs is the biggest danger to your health and well-being, so it's important to remain drug-free. Student producer Matthew Bettishar has a PSA to teach us more, but first, Matthew told us why making videos are important. Uh, I just want to say, like, 
um, if you ever thought if anybody out there is watching this right now and they think that like, oh, it's just film. Oh, it's just, you're just wasting your time going outside holding a camera. It, there's a much more to that. And like production where you're just filming, that's a very little part of what media is. It's post-production, pre-production is everything. It that kids these days are all about staying safe. And in our next video, the students of Folks Ranch Elementary will show us their efforts to improve bus safety. Hi, I'm Alex Saad. And I am Tristan Harlan. I'm Olivia Ledesma. I'm Amal Tappy. I'm Hui Fu. I'm Hannah Spear. I'm Shelby Stevens. I'm Emily Winslow. And, and we, we want to make the world a better place. Mr. Bentley, our teacher, introduced us to an assignment called Project Citizen. Project Citizen is a way for kids to make a change in their community by fixing a problem. To start off, he wrote ideas on big posters about bug bus in the community. Later, Ma thought of the idea of seatbelts on school buses. He thought this was a safety issue because people were getting hurt and killed from not having seatbelts on school buses. Our group was struggling at first to find trustworthy information on websites. There were lots of statistics and lots of websites with contradictory information. What we did learn amazed us. <laughs> We learned from the American Academy of Pediatrics and NHTSA National Highway Traffic Safety Administration that we have six deaths and 17,000 injuries annually. This information persuaded us to learn more about bus safety and advocate for seatbelts on school buses. To get started, we asked Mr. Bentley for help. He told us to write an email to Jill Gialdo. She is the Director of Transportation in the Elk Grove Unified School District. In our email, we explained we were trying to learn more about bus safety and whether or not seatbelts was something that the district was pursuing. We sent her several questions regarding this. Before we sent an email to Mrs. Gialdo, we sent it to our principal, Mrs. Kropp, to get her feedback on what we were saying and how we were saying it. Mrs. Kropp told us she read it, but we came on too strong. She said we should do it again, but not talk like Mrs. Gaiotto does not care about child safety. <laughs> so, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your letter, and I, I just wanted to see if I can give you a little bit of advice, a few tips that maybe might help in the communication piece. Um, when you're communicating with adults who don't, are not used to working with children, kind of all, all people in general, sometimes it's your, your voice, because you're also knowledgeable about what you're trying to do, comes across a little strong. She gave us some great advice to think about. We made a few changes with the help of Mr. Bentley and resent it to Ms. Kropp. Mrs. Kropp this time sent an email back saying she loved it. Then we sent it to Mrs. Jagai. A few hours later, she emailed us back. She was so excited to hear that we were studying the subject. She gave us some statistics about how many people die in. On average, about one student per year. She told us that what happens inside a school bus during a crash where it happens inside the danger zone, outside the school bus, behind and in front. The statistics are very different from ours. We also learned that the reason we don't have seatbelts on old school buses is because of funding. We don't have enough money for seatbelts on old school buses because the death and injury level is so low. Knowing that we couldn't get seatbelts on school buses, we are opting for a new way to make a difference in our community by making PSAs, educating students about staying away from the school bus's danger zone. The danger zone is the blind spots of a bus driver. By making these videos, we can prevent death and injuries. The videos will go online for the entire world to see. Adults aren't the only ones who can make a difference. We can too.
It's important to always be safe when crossing the street. Being a pedestrian can be pretty dangerous, so lucky for us, student producer Joshua Singleton is here to teach us about how to properly cross the street. Joshua, what was your part in making this video? I was the one that, um, like, like stepped off the, um, like, Mrs. Mrs. McKellar. She um, told me, like, to stay in the position, and she was, like, taking pictures. And, like, she put them, um, she got, um, then this other day, she got me, and um, she showed me what I did. And she put them all on the pictures together. And, um, and, um, and I looked at it, and we just kept on, and we, like, she showed all of us, and that's how we made the, the. No, wait, the car's coming! Crossing the street is not as easy as it looks. First, you have to stop at the curb. Look left. Look right. Then look left again. Step off the curb and walk across the street in the middle of the crosswalk. Don't let your friends distract you or make you do something unsafe. Follow these rules and you will cross the street safely. In high school, a lot of teens are learning to drive. And when it comes to driving, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. Some students from Cordova High School explain the do's and don'ts of driving to us. Hi, I'm Steven. And I'm Sandy. And today we're going to teach you guys how to drive the right way. Over in Sonoma, a program has been started to teach about the dangers of distracted driving. Student producer Jared Cambridge is bringing us the story. I think that uh, video is an art form, and it's um, it's uh, as it's esoteric, and it's also um, powerful to uh, to to people. It, it creates a, an art form when you when you create video. So. It's, it really should be respected, like everything else. Good morning, Mesa. From MBTV, I'm William Mafansuk. Hi, I'm Jared Cambridge. I'm Ashley Chantel. at the Sonoma Raceway. He's the creator of the Distracted Driver program, and I have a few questions for him. So, John, what um, was the catalyst to make you decide to uh, start this program? Well, distracted driving is, is getting to be a bigger problem, not only in this area, but certainly around the country. So we thought 
what better way to raise awareness to the dangers of, of distracted driving than by having an event here at the track. We've got a facility, we've got instructors who can be in the cars with the students, we've got the California Highway Patrol and our good partner St. Joseph Health of Sonoma County. So uh, the catalyst was it being a huge problem and we're just able to do it here. So it all it all made sense. Scared when you put the teams behind the wheel? No, not at all. I mean, we do stuff out on the racetrack. We were only going, you know, 35 to 60 miles an hour in general out there, and it's a controlled environment. So I'm not scared because I know what the car can do. I also know that as the passenger, I have an element of control, either with the shifter or I have to grab the steering wheel or even the e-brake if things get, you know, too out of control. So there's more control there than, than you might realize from the passenger seat. For MVTV. MVTV. MVTV, where if it's happening on and off campus, we have it covered. Back to you. Back to you. Back to you in the studio. So our video is about Austin Young, who is a high school student. He's going to college next year. And he was diagnosed with cancer when he was six months old. And he decided to create a fundraiser called Gaming for a Cause, where people enter, pay money to enter a tournament, and they play video games, which everyone loves doing that. And he gives all that money, all the proceeds go to Correct Family House, which is a organization that houses cancer patients while they're being treated. Gaming for a Cause, we are always planning to grow and make our tournaments larger so we can give more money to fund other charities that need it. Um, he was a friend of my brother and he was invited to go to the very first tournament and so I went with my mom and was interested to see what it was. So I was there and um, then when we were given this assignment I knew exactly what I wanted to do it about. It's the second Saturday, the tournament's every second Saturday of each month and he's still working, it's growing a lot, he's really happy to see the success of it. Um, it was actually really good. We went to one of the tournaments and we brought our cameras, my friend and I, and we just went around shooting people playing the video games. And um, there was so much, it was really interesting to see there's so many different tournaments going on, a whole bunch of different kids. And not even kids from the high school, but people just hear about it on the streets and they just come in and like adults too. It's a wide variety of people. It's really amazing to see the community come together at these video game tournaments. I mean, you'd never expect everyone so willing to help. Everyone in some way has been touched by cancer and wants to help and give back and get rid of cancer. So I think that this lesson that we're teaching to all of our peers to be selfless and to like give back to people when you might be in the same position is really something people need to hear because I know that people sometimes dwell on their problems and I know I've done that too. I dwell on my problems instead of being grateful for what I have and maybe helping other people in my same position like Austin. And that's it for this episode of Student TV. If you would like to get your video on Student TV, you just need to enter it into the SIVAs, the Student Educational Video Awards. Entries are due in March each year, and you can find out more information about the SIVAs and Student TV on the SECC website, secctv.org. See you next time, and in the meantime, stay safe.